This is Straff TV. My name is Kaka. Fine Sunday morning. I have my guests. The weather is fine. The house is cool. Awaiting you to join us for this broadcast. My director says broadcast. Kenya would say show. But now that we have a broadcast, it's going to be a real broadcast. We love this and we welcome you on board. Traff TV is barely crawling into our first month of operation and we are really, really impressed. We have our fans in East Africa who are very happy with us. They're giving us very positive feedback. And we have fans in the United States. They're also impressed. We have people in the Middle East who are telling us to keep going on. And Europe is with us because there are people there who watch us and they are very loyal to us. Our numbers are growing, the fan base is growing, and it is getting better every day. So before we go on, let's start by everybody who is watching me now. And you haven't subscribed, tap that down and start by subscribing to us on Facebook, we are Trav TV. On YouTube, we are Trav TV. And on Instagram, we are Traff underscore TV. This Sunday morning, I have a guest because the diaspora is huge. And when the diaspora speaks, the world listens because it is the diaspora that makes the world by way of movement from your country to the other and from one region of the world to the other, one continent to the other, so forth, so much. I have a guest. Kenyan lady, beautiful girl, she's a mother, she's a mentor, she speaks to people, her face may be familiar to you, but it's a special day, and she's one of the ladies that believe every day is a new day, let me see in Gemma, welcome to the studios. <laughs> And by the way, uh -huh. <laughs> you're the first live guest in this studio. Oh, that sounds so good. Thank the, you so much. I'm glad to be on Traff TV. The studio <laughs> is premiering you as the first person to be interviewed here. And it's not by coincidence. Awesome. This is going to be, we are destined for great things. Traff TV is going to go way, way, way far. Hello, everybody. This is Eva Nyarolande, and um, I'm glad to be with you today. And I hope this guy is going to make this show one of the greatest. What's, what's that name again? It sounded like German to me. What's the name? Eva Nyarolande. United Kisung. Uh-huh. <laughs> Take a seat. I'm glad to be here today, and I cannot wait to be able to talk to you out there when you have to deal with the first guest in a new tv station uh -huh. and you are dealing with a person who serves god and you're dealing with somebody who believes in a better tomorrow it can't be challenging more than it is to me now because i feel i'm dealing with the finest that Kenya has to give their state this country and the world say hi to your fans and let them know what are you going to say to them this morning? Oh boy, that introduction is quite humbling. Whew, where do I start? I'm just but a humble servant. And just by the fact that I know I have been chosen to serve, I am willing to serve. I serve as a minister through One Word Digital Media right here in Washington State, one of the Kenyan-owned um, online television stations. I also speak, I speak to, I speak to youth, I hold, I hold conferences. And um, besides that, I know myself as a motivator. And that is what makes me keep going every day. He keeps saying I'm positive and that is, there's nothing else to life. There's nothing else to life other than just being positive you know what you always look back at your past and you think like sometimes when you have faltered you think like you know i won't get up and walk tomorrow but that is when you look at your future and you tell your future future you know what the past is gone 
I am facing you and I'm coming back strong and better. And that is why I want to welcome all of you. My handle is Eva at Eva Nyarolande on Facebook, Eva Nyarolande on, um, on, on, uh, on, on YouTube. I'm Pauline Eva Over on YouTube. I'm Pauline Eva Over on, uh, on, on Instagram. I'm Eva Nyarolande. And um, that is the name I use to go out there when I'm speaking to people. And I enjoy talking to people. And I'm so glad Mwangi invited me here today. And I do not know what I'm going to tell you. But what I want to tell you is do not touch that dial. This show is filled with so much for you. It's beefed up because I know the kind of interview we have here. So keep it right here. Don't go anywhere. But when I tell you people, no people and no things, you had it. My name is Kaka. We now take off to the tough part, the questions, the observations, the what. You said you are a servant. I suppose you're not a government servant because you know what government servants do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's nice. I asked you to come for this show or rather you organize this show because you need to speak to people. A few things are not going right in people's lives. A few things are not going right in government. Because people are not very careful enough to understand that you need the other person. Mm -hmm. You need to be empathetic about the other person. When the person is going through, you need to be knowing if that person is willing to share it. And when a problem is shared, it's a problem hard. Mm -hmm. You speak to the youth and other people. What is the common thing you can say is common in America and in Kenya or Africa about people and the youth especially. Okay, your question is very broad. I don't even know how to dissect it in the first place. But I'm looking at it like this. You told me, you asked about serving. What is, what is service? What is service? And I always like going back to the Bible when I talk about service. When I talk about service is, what is the beauty to serve? Learning to serve makes you enjoy whatever task you're set to do. Let us look at the life of Jesus, for example. Jesus served, and at the point where Jesus, in the book of Matthew, where Jesus was meeting with his disciples and they went to the upper room, he had gathered with his disciples and Jesus knew that his time was coming to an end. So he decided to hold a party, you know, like the way you, you, you're leaving Washington State. Now you're going back to Kenya and you're holding a farewell, a farewell party. Jesus called in his, <laughs> he called in his disciples so that they have that farewell bash. And when they were having the farewell bash, he told them, I will be the one serving you. His disciples felt a little uneasy, you know. You imagine the president of Kenya telling you, hey, or the president of America telling you, hey, chill, I'll be the one serving the drinks in the, in the table today. Peter, as we know him, told him, no, master, don't do it. Don't wash our feet. We're going to do it for you. And he was like, no, for you to learn to lead, you must first learn to be servant for you to be a leader you must first learn to serve what is service what first let word i use when i'm talking about service is humility humility is quite a tough thing to do many people look at it as a simple word humbleness no. Humility is bringing yourself down, bringing your ego down, bringing your wealth and, and, and all your status down and ready to pick up from the lowest point as you go up. No matter what position God gives you, no matter where the Lord has placed you, no matter what title God has given you, <laughs> When you start your service in humility, 
you will not look at a child. You will not look at an adult. You will be able to do anything you are tasked upon to do in joy because you know that you are not doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for a greater goal that the Lord had placed you there to perform. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really enjoying what's going on in this broadcast. Because you know what? I might end up talking too much. <laughs> but that question was so, it was so beefed. And I'm still, I'm still pushing it. So, lesson number one, humility in service. Yeah? Well, when you do, when, when you have crossed from humility, lesson number two. You know, we are learning to lead. We are, we are growing leaders now. You're serving in humility. Number two, lack of biasness. And you ask me, what do I see in Africa and America that affects our leaders? Mm -hmm. Number one is lack of humility. Number two is bias. When you have been given a position with God, be it a political position, even if you are not Christian, God has appointed you to lead. And when he appoints you to lead, he wants you to treat everyone as equal. And I go back to the story of Jesus again. Jesus knew no Gentile. And he knew no Jew. Let's talk about the story of Zacchaeus. Everyone disliked Zacchaeus. No one wanted to, to, to talk about Zacchaeus because he was the tax collector. Kanjo, <laughs> as we very well call them. Yeah? Kanjo, he was our Kanjo. And uh, he would come and pick taxes from everyone, collect all the taxes. Huh? KRA, you see like right now people are saying, KRA should not see you going out to Mombasa because they will come for you. <laughs> yeah, lifestyle audit. Yeah. And people did not want Zacchaeus at all. And so when Jesus was coming, Zacchaeus was afraid. He really wanted to meet this man people have been talking about. He really wanted to know who is this person? Why, why, does he, why does he bring in so many people around him? Yet he's such a humble person. And he decided, you know, because I'm a short man, I will go and climb upon a sycamore tree so that Jesus, I will be able to see Jesus from far. I won't get to where Jesus is. And you know what happened? Jesus walked right up to the sycamore tree where, 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 where Zacchaeus was patched up there. And you know what he did? Zacchaeus, please come down. Tonight, I will go and dine with you. Did Jesus think about what the people were saying about Zacchaeus? He did not. No. Was Jesus biased? No. And that is what we need from our leaders. Our leaders need to lead us in unity. Our leaders need not to look at me as a Jaluo, you as a Kikuyu, him as a Kamba, him as an American, him as a black or white, him as, an, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a Mexican. We are all the same. As long as you're chosen to lead, you're never chosen to lead the black or white. You lead everyone as a unit. It's now getting intense when you mention Mexico here. Yeah. And you met <laughs> Jalo and others in America. Yeah. What I like about America is that everywhere you go, they'll write something, some word which is even on police cars. Yeah. I see it. It's mm -hmm. part of the model they have here. Uh -huh. The word is integrity. Integrity. In America wow. is huge on integrity. Uh -huh. And they say integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking. Uh -huh. Like it's upon you to decide I'm doing the right thing and no matter what happens, I will not change this. I'm not lower my bar because this is I believe in it. It's my belief in this, and it is expected of me. No one is obligated to be good to you. No one is obligated to be nice to anybody. Yeah. No one owes you nothing. Uh -huh. Someone decides I'm just going to be a nice person. I'm just going to be good, and you let it be. 
So now you have spoken about leaders, you have spoken about servants. Some, 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 some deep challenges like uh, this is America and uh, <laughs> just say it, we are on air, don't be afraid. <laughs> no, this is speak it as like it is. You know why? There's black and white. Yes. Not not the TV sets. These are the things. <laughs> so having said that. Mm -hmm. I realize you have gathered a lot of knowledge uh -huh. with yourself uh -huh. and uh, you share it and I'm glad you share it with the world. Mm -hmm. A background about yourself because now we realize not anyone says anything. People question, people doubt, people believe you even without meeting you because a lot of people have given you audience mm -hmm. and they know yeah. about you. Mm -hmm. Two minutes, not more. Okay. About yourself. About and, myself? Yeah. Okay, like I say, I am a humble servant and being a humble servant, sometimes those titles don't really matter. But I will tell you, um, I am a, I'm, I'm a student of sociology, bachelor's in sociology. I did, I, 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 did a, I did a course in English Swahili. I once was an English Swahili teacher in, back home in Kenya. And um, I, have, um, I have done journalism. I have a journalistic background. I went to the I went to the African Nazarene University. I did journalism in African Nazarene University. So um, I have a media background. And well, my greatest bit, the, the part that I love most is the part that I I so um day to day in America I work as a caregiver. I am a trainer. I train caregivers. I train caregivers. I am a certified CPR instructor. And um, besides that, I am a life coach. And me being a life coach, I, I started this from learning to teach children. I taught children for about 20 years in Kenya. I led one of the biggest 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 church groups in in Nairobi city new life sda church and we are we are a band called the flying marines and um through that experience i've managed to grow through different heights i may not i may not as, appear as your regular <laughs> your regular go-to person but my experience has put me out there my experience has allowed me to be able to speak to people and my experience has been able to, 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 to put me on a platform where every Friday I'm able to have a show online and we, we talk, we share the word of God and I've been invited to host various forums. I've been invited to many preaching assignments and well, that is me. And besides that, I am a mother of two, a beautiful daughter called Chantal and a beautiful boy called Chandler. I asked you about yourself because I realized even coming to the studio, you carried a book. <laughs> <laughs> it means you read, you research. And obviously when you're knowledgeable, it motivates you to seek knowledge even more. I see this is Halda Bantain, Woman of Courage. Why the choice of this book? Talk to a woman out there who may want to hear this. Women. You know, sometimes we make a joke and say, when you say woman, it's not just woman, but it's a woman who came from the man. So when we say we men, know that we have encompassed the men <laughs> within us as well, all right? We men, right? <laughs> but let me tell you, the woman can be described as what fruit? A fruit that you, when you look on the outside, looks very cushy, but on the inside is really strong. A woman can be likened to an egg. You see, before you boil the egg, the egg is you can actually break it and you know, it's so, but boil it, it becomes hard boiled. 
I love women because from the experiences I get from women and the things I have seen women go through. And I know you can tell me about your mother, for example. And I know women have some kind of strength that I have never understood. A woman would be crying, but they, they, they bring out some, they cry in grace. They bring out some form of grace that you have never understood. I like, I like reading books about women. And I would tell you, women are a courageous lot. And I talk so much about women. And I've mentioned so many women in the Bible. For example, let's talk about Rahab. Rahab. Did you know anything about Rahab in the Bible? Rahab is the one who welcomed the spies. You remember the spies that were sent to go? They were sent to go and check out... Uh, they were sent to go and... <laughs> okay, I'll tell you about Rahab. <laughs> now, I, 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 at least I know about Sarah. Yeah, but, but I'll tell you about Rahab. Yeah. Rahab was known to be a prostitute. Right. Yeah. Rahab was known to be a prostitute. But when, when uh, David sent out spies to go and check out the land they were supposed to go and conquer, Rahab welcomed those spies. And when she welcomed those spies, she hid them. And when the, the, the soldiers from, from, from their, 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 their locality came, she was a gentle woman. Remember, she wasn't a Jew. She was a gentle woman. And when they came, she told them they were not there. But she hid them. And later on, she is one of the women who have been mentioned, where men of faith have been mentioned. You know where Paul was mentioning the men of faith? Rehab was amongst the women who were mentioned there because just from the stories she had heard about David and, uh, and David conquering, fighting and conquering for Israel, she believed in the God of Israelites. And that is one thing I know about women. Women have a very strong faith. A woman has a kind of character that when things go down, she will pick up the pieces piss them up and tell you, get up, man of God. Look up and walk. She will be the one, she'll be the one to tell you, you know what? Wipe those tears. We will make it. The kind of faith that has been displayed by women makes me want to always want to read about women. And I, the, the women I talk about is Priscilla Shira. There is, um, there is, uh, there's, uh, there's Hulda Bantain. There's so many women who give us great experiences in this life and they make us grow and we are able to, to move from, from life, from age to age. I would love to, um, to continue. And if you ask me to talk about women, it will lead a convention. I actually will be planning for a, a women's convention and I will invite people to come over so that I can talk to people for a whole week and we get to know each other and we get to have more time. When you talk about women and you say you taught kids for 20 years, I'll also tell you that 20 years ago I was a school teacher in Kenya and I was teaching in a secondary school just in my hometown and I had a colleague, uh, he's so rest in peace, his name was Mr. Musa. Mr. Musa had something written on his wall, he had written on his wall that your wife, your sister, and your mother are all women. Amen. I like that. <laughs> your wife, your sister, sister your mother, mother are all, all women. women. You know, there's times when you tend to forget you, you, you treat your mom better than you treat your wife. It happens. And for even the men out there, when you're treating these women, when you look out to these women, look at each woman as your daughter. Look at this woman as your wife. Look at this woman as, you know, don't assume that because this woman is just a woman you have met on the street. Ask yourself, how would I feel if my mother was treated the same way I'm treating this woman? Women have a great part in our generation for tomorrow. Women have a huge role they have played in our generation, in our past. Look at Rosa Parks, for example. The journey of Rosa Parks. Were it not for Rosa Parks, some of us would not be boarding buses today. 
were it not for the Rosa Parks, some of us would not be having sitting in parliament to be able to, or sitting in the Senate to be, or sitting as governors to be able to present an agenda for our people. Were it not for great women that we have seen, people like Maya, uh, Maya oh, Angelou, they are people who have set the path. And they're very great women. If we start mentioning them, they are so great. And let me tell you, women out there, you have a future. Women out there, get up and build your future. Women out there, build your child. Build your man. You, you are destined for greatness. Talking about women in Kenya, this is an election year in Kenya and it has all manner of challenges. And uh, I now want us to take a short break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the Kenyan situation, political-wise and leadership governance. And still, we still have to continue about women a bit because there's a lady who is Kenyan. May her soul rest in peace. We will not talk about the Kenyan liberation, in the second liberation of the Kenyan to multipartism and a few other things about governance. That the story of Kenya will not be complete without that lady. To give you a hint, she's a Nobel laureate. Okay, we will play some music as we wait to do the second session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 